Great relationships don't just happen. They're designed. Why leave love to chance when you can make strategic decisions in your relationship just like you do in your career? The days of having to settle for mediocre are over. Welcome to Project Relationship. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. Join me as I explore the decisions and choices that make relationships work no matter what life throws your way. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Let's go. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton, and I'm here with my partner, Ken Hamilton, and we're talking today about something specific in relationships that we can all get better at. I don't think anybody is an expert at talking about boundaries. Um, And this whole season of the Project Relationship Podcast, we're talking about um, how we can move through the holiday stresses and, and some different ways we can look at holiday stresses um, in, in a way that actually brings us closer together rather than driving a wedge between us. A way, there's a thing about the holidays. There's I don't know. A lot of there's a thing. The I don't think anybody um, meets the holidays with a completely you know, clean slate. Yeah. I have no stuff, no hang ups, no Nobody's stress over it. Nobody's coming in neutral. Um, Yeah, there's always some stuff. And boundaries is a topic that often we talk about in a very vague sense, but I think the holidays gives us a very specific way to think about how we can get what we want, how we can not have to do what we don't want to do. Um, Yeah. What, so what the heck are boundaries? Well, what, how do you define boundaries? Me? Okay. First of all, disclaimer, I'm not a PhD in anything. I don't, I'm, I'm not an expert. And of the things that I am even passably good at boundaries isn't on the list. Um, It's gotten better though. Which is good. I mean, that's the whole, the whole idea is to, to get better at these things. So what are they? Um, For me, it's knowing the difference between uh, what I want and what other people want. (laughs) There you go. Yeah. So boundaries. So in the book that I wrote, Project Relationship, which is specifically for what was written specifically for the entrepreneurial woman uh, who wants a passionate and sustainable relationship without giving up on all of her big dreams. um, I talk about boundaries as a way to invite your partner into intimacy. So in other words, being able to know what you want and know what you don't want and to be able to communicate those things is actually a gift that you give to your partner. Um, it's, it's your instruction manual or the closest thing we get to one. However, um, it's hard and it starts with knowing what we actually want hard enough. Yeah. And I, I don't think you've used the word projection yet, but one of the problems that I have. So knowing what I want that for me, that's, that's hard enough, but then there's looking out at my partner or not just you, Jolie, but, but anybody looking out and instead of seeing who's there, seeing what I think is there or what you wish was, or what I wish was there. And now, and, and that's actually, that's a boundary violation because that's me like going around whatever you've decided you want and deciding you want something else. And, and then if I don't, if, if there's no discussion around that, if I don't talk to you about, Hey, I think you're, you want this. It doesn't have to be that straightforward and simple, but if I don't do that and I just act as though you want this thing, um, I can yeah, get we're into in for some a big mess. real problems. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's not just you. That That's just everyone. And certainly me too. I think that a time in our relationship where this has come up, um, it, I mean, the holidays do, they always actually percolate to the top when I think about how we misstep in our boundary setting. Cause we do pretty well in, in our day to day life. Um, but understanding how to set boundaries starts with yeses and Mm no's, knowing what I want, knowing what you want. Um, 
so I'm thinking about <laughs> trying to decide how to have our holidays together, how to specifically have Christmas together. Yep. We were coming together. We um, we were, we were, I, they always say the phrase blending a family. That sounds a little, uh, a little kitchen appliancey, but and at best it's an interweaving anyway. It's, yeah, so we were bringing blend. together our families though, and yep. trying to figure out what we wanted for the holidays. And while we were both very worried about the how the kids would respond, I don't think either of us knew how hard it would be to just to know what we actually wanted to do. So yeah. I'm thinking about the time that um, okay. Ken likes to be outside. He really likes to be outside, like a lot. And I enjoy the outdoors, but Ken has slept in piles of leaves and called it a good night. Um, also snow. Oh, excellent. Right. Don't forget the snow cave. <laughs> um, that's not my jam. I'm not here for that. Uh, but he likes to spend time outside and at the holidays, even more so. So there are these these things. So we we wanted to plan together a new holiday experience and first off we were talking about well let's let's have outdoor time sure absolutely you wanted outdoor time and i and i heard that which is a perfectly good thing to experiment with like okay let's see what happens right. when we do this but i heard that initial request in those early years as like let's go for a walk after dinner or something like that oh yeah <laughs> and you, and you were thinking much more along the lines of let's make sure that we spend lots of time outside leading up to the holidays um decorating outside and having lots of fires outside and and going for walks outside and let's have snowball fights even though often there is no snow before christmas here no. um but you were building up this vision for me and i wanted to make it happen but i'm remembering now this one time where we had had snow um but it had all gotten all mucky too because there had also been thawing and melting so it's icy and muddy and snowy all at the same time hello new england yay we all had small children attached to us because not all the kids were big enough to really manage the snow and ice. Um, so, you know, we're carrying little children. Or would sink in the mud. Yeah. <laughs> and we're trying to have a good time. It's supposed to be festive, right? And then on top of it, we want somehow to include caroling in all of this. So now we're trying to walk with children in the snow and ice and mud. And we need to sing, which means we need to remember the, <laughs> the words to the songs. And, and you know it's dark outside really so don't you like can't read the kids right. don't like to <laughs> sing or read and uh, meltdown yeah serious serious meltdown yeah and it so that was <laughs> and that was me having these these expectations of what could be yeah. without any actual experience about what it would be like when we got into it for one thing but that aside even if I had like grown up this way and that was the way holidays were for me, now here we are and I'm saying, let's go outside. And we had seven kids under the age of like 12 at this point. <clears throat> yep. And and yeah. And your your response was, all right, let's, okay. Let's That's what you it. want. Let's go try it. And your response now <clears throat> would be, be practical. <laughs> Think it would about be. this. I would. Be. So my eyes. Because tend... that's your authentic response to it. Right. So my, I didn't have a boundary around this that was like a hard no. I was checking in with myself. So one of the tools I use to figure out what boundaries I, I need, I need to have is to check in with my body. Am I getting like a, a no response and a no mm. response for me will come out like um, goosebumps I'll get this sort of shaky feeling under my sternum and my voice kind of freezes up. It doesn't go away entirely, but it freezes up and it gets small. Yeah. Um, and when those things happen, if I'm alert to the cues I'm getting, I know that it's time for me to figure out how to talk about the fact that I'm getting a full no from my body. It's saying, it's saying, wait, hold on, don't go there or figure out how you're going to go there better than this. But I... I don't think I knew to slow down, you know, that enough to check in in those early years, especially to check in with my body and then communicate that no that I was getting. Yeah. And I, I thought of a whole bunch of things to say as you were talking. First of all, uh, what, what you just said, I just all put it all together. I can watch you for your cues for a no. 
Because you just described something that happened just a little while ago yeah. today. And if I had thought about it in this way, that I could look for your physical no cues, I could have said, oh, she's got a big no going on right now. I need to find out what it is. Because it's not always easy to say when when you're in it, it's not always easy to just say, here's my no. And this is this is a sticky spot for me because I believe in explicit communication. Like I believe in it as a top three value, yep. explicit communication. But that doesn't mean that I always have the guts to do it either. I'm not perfect at this. And when I say boundaries are an invitation to your to intimacy, what I mean is we can choose to also embrace the implicit yeah. and the nonverbal and the the uh, all the other information that we're getting and then try to help our partners make explicit yeah what's going on totally so it, what's a way that you do that for me because sometimes i do get into that sort of frozen spot what's something that you do then when you do well, catch on um Mostly I use words. I try to make explicit what I think I'm seeing and see if I can yeah. get you to agree. Yeah. So I will try on a couple things, which can sometimes get frustrating. You're like, no, that's not true. But but that's the way to get there. I, I might see a no, but not know what it's about. Yeah. And so I can I can talk and try to, if you're having trouble with the words, try to give you words and pick from them. Yeah. But also the physical no response could be um it may be that i can give you a hug yeah. or help you move through that feeling of being stuck in it to where you can talk so there's some you know whatever whatever our particular comfort moves are yeah and when i see you getting a no response um i do often i'll give you like three options i'll, I'll guess in three different directions yeah. and say are you feeling this or this or this? And not like rapid fire, but just in a slow way, give you a menu to choose yeah. from because it feels clear that you're overwhelmed and you trying know. to communicate everything yeah. that's going on inside, trying to get it out. And so sometimes giving you that that menu of options gives you a way to like, yeah. okay, pick one. Instead of try having, it on. Yep. But I also try not to like marry you to it. You don't have right. to be fully connected to it in this inextricable way you could just try the idea on yep. and instead of instead of me or you having to express everything that's going on to be able to just point and pick like yeah. this seems like what i'm experiencing right now it's it's way easier to do that although from a boundaries point of view i have trouble claiming my nose yeah claiming a, a no so you'll see me feeling it you'd be like is it this no, 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 no. And I'll just reject the whole idea that I might be saying no. So that's a problem I have. That's a holiday thing for you. So one of the Ooh, things yeah. you, I have seen happen is that you sometimes need, he needs time alone. Shocking, right? Um, as a, as a somewhat no, I don't. <laughs> introverted person, um, yeah. you know, and you have communicated to me that you need time alone. But when you're offered time alone, yeah. you often will reject it mm -hmm. um, because the, you also have this vision of what the holidays are supposed to be yep. and how they're supposed to be family and this um, coziness and all tied together somehow neatly into a loving package as if we didn't have all the regular stressors of life going on at too. the same time. Um, and then on top of that, yeah, we're, what are your day-to-day -day needs for being alone and taking time for yourself? And now you add to it this holiday mystique. Mystique, that's a good word for it, yeah. And then, yeah, so sometimes I have to encourage you to take that time for yourself by simply coming up with something for the rest of us to do that doesn't include you. <laughs> yep. Like sometimes that's yeah. the biggest gift I can give you is like a moment where I'm like, you know what, we're going to go do this. 2020 is going to be a little harder we're going to go do this isn't necessarily yeah. a reasonable yep. thing to do um, to duck out of the house with a whole bunch of kids. Um, but, and that's, that is a gift. It's a big gift to do that for me because if you hadn't chosen to do that as, as a gift consciously and intentionally, intentionally, um, 
then what I would be doing is essentially manipulating you by by saying no I don't need time alone and alone when in fact I do I'm making it your problem to yeah. fix and that's and a boundary that, problem it, that's fascinating because that reminds me of what will happen is we'll get caught in a loop where you are giving me all these nonverbal no cues <laughs> you're telling me that yes you only want closeness and and then you start picking fights <laughs> <laughs> so that so that I'm so like, that you know what like, we need to go. do? We need to spend some time alone. Oh, do we? Well, then if we must, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. goodness. It's so, pretty bad. Well, no, I mean, but we we each grew up with our patterns. Yeah. And then here we are with just ourselves. And I'm very extroverted, but also need time to myself. You have had, you have you have identified as very introverted, but... It's tough. You have some <laughs> tough call. Yeah, okay. it's a tough call. I mean, here I am on a podcast. Yeah, here you Everybody are. Everybody listen to me. Not so introverted, but I think I grew up. You get in, your energy know, from that. I do. Yeah, but there, yeah. there's the important part. You get energy from spending time in your inner world. Yep. But it's yeah. hard for you to claim that space. It is, and I grew up in an avoidant family. Yeah. Where everybody. Eh, not everybody, not all the time, but it was very common for people to avoid uncomfortable situations. So now I have patterns which don't serve me at all of avoiding things that, that in my own judgment, are, are trouble. Yeah. They won't even necessarily be. I come to you and say, I'd like some time alone. And you're like, okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, that's fine. I can think of plenty I, of things to do. I am not a 100% fun person to be around all the time. So even, like, well, you but know what? That, that aside. That aside, though, sometimes it's it's great to see you just grab on to what you need to do, want to do for yourself and and take that time. Um, but yeah, you have you have wanted a lot of reassurance around that. And I think that's okay. Well, it's not on it's not an uncommon thing, I don't think, that um uh, that the things we want, we have trouble claiming. And then, um, well, I know that it's a common thing for me to, um, so boundaries are an invitation to intimacy, you said. Yeah. And I completely agree with that because when I, when I blur and blur those boundaries. Well, we by, can't tell the difference between when you we can't, and I. Yeah. And I, yeah. and am I manipulating you or are you, like offering me something and if you can't tell when i can't tell i don't know what you're thinking and feeling for real yeah and that's for me that's what intimacy is so what's going on inside of you right now for real no no um don't don't sugarcoat it i want to really know what's going on well if i blur the boundaries there's no way for me to tell what's you what's me so we have found that a really useful thing is for each of us to go to our separate corners and um, write about where mm -hmm. where we're at, yeah. and write for as long as it takes to get all that stuff out, and then come back together. Because the writing is is an action that lets us differentiate ourselves a little bit more. Yeah, that works for me very well. By the the starting writing is just a jumbled mess, and over time, it, everything gets clearer and clearer. Yeah. So we just talked a bunch about how we communicate or or don't or successfully don't. communicate our no's, but the yes is a big deal. So boundaries rely on knowing what your hell yes, I am totally mm -hmm. here for this. Um, knowing what you want. It, like that's part of it. And I know my own somatic cues for a uh, for a for a full yes pretty well. And I think I can read yours, but I'm now just remembering in the earlier days and, and really even just till a couple of years ago at the holidays, I would fake my full yes quite a bit. I would, I knew what it looked like to get a full yes from me. And so I would fake it because mm -hmm. at the holidays, that felt like the nicest thing to do. I'm getting a when Harry met Sally moment. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yes, I can always tell yes. when you're faking it. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> it's no, I can't. Um, particularly when I'm looking when that's what I want. Yeah. When I want to see the yes and you give me one, yeah, I'm likely to believe it. So I'm thinking about um 
some of the stuff that just hasn't, it, it's just not my style. I don't like to do a lot of holiday decorating. It's just not my thing, but. Well, to be fair, I like the place decorated. I would like for someone oh, else well, to do it. Well, there you go. Okay. Which I just saw a sign that somebody <laughs> said, holiday decorating, you know, call this <laughs> number. I'm like, ooh, that's that cool could idea. be That could be your, but, yeah. your thing. I didn't realize that I was faking my yeses sometimes at the holidays until I think last year when I was really, I was claiming some space for myself and, and trying to participate fully, not, not using the excuse of being busy working on my, my dissertation or whatever. I was trying to claim like, I'm going to be here. I'm going to show up and be here for the holiday and, and do the things I want. I'm like, Ooh, we've made some, I've made some mistakes in the le years leading up to this where I have led you all to believe that I uh, enjoy doing well, a whole bunch of things. But I missed out on exploring some of the stuff I really did want. A full yes for me comes with Christmas caroling. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like I want to sing Christmas carols. I want to have somebody playing a guitar or a piano and I want to sit in a room full of people and just sing and I don't care how off key people are. I just want to sing. But I don't ask for that because I'm busy dancing around yeah. all the other stuff that people want and giving these and getting these getting sort of kind of what I want. Um, I see. But we we and talked I, about needing to like own and then make happen what we really had for full yeses. Yes. Taking and, responsibility for that. And I think it's important, really important to give our partners, our friends, the people around us permission to change their minds, permission to change their yeah, story. That's so, a good point. so all those things that you just said, I can see you get feeling like, okay, now I'm stuck. I've agreed to these things for years. I've pretended to have a yes for years. So I need to keep doing that. What if you didn't? Right. What Christmas if you were invited in to say yeah. no where you have a no? And, and why would this year be different from last, like the same as last year? Every year is different. But the traditional, the ah, pull tradition. of tradition, right? What is that? Yeah. Peer pressure from your from your ancestors? Peer pressure right? from your ancestors. <laughs> um, the, the pull of tradition means that even just on a short scale of the the uh, 11 years or, yeah. I mean, I've known you my whole life, I, the, the traditional things that happen at the holidays, these, that tradition has so much gravity. Yeah. And so I'm, I think I'm giving it a lot. I, I give it a lot of um, energy when, in fact, I believe in creating today to be what I need it to be. And tradition should be in service to presence in the moment. Mm -hmm. the, the, that's what I want from you at the holidays. I want your presence even if that means you're taking time for yourself. So, well, so I want you to be present Well, the thing is, that's that my authentic too. presence. It's yeah. not, well, it's... Your the, absence could be your presence? Something like that. My absence is my present. <laughs> right? Oh, wait, that's different. Yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas. I'm going away for a while. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, it is um, the, the setting of boundaries is on so many different kinds of levels. Yeah. And we could talk about this for absolutely ever, but I did want to circle back to something you said earlier and I'll have to go back and listen. I don't remember exactly what we were talking about, but one of your boundaries is that you require activities to be intentional and with forethought and planning. Oh, I do. And so one of the, I wanted to point out that the activities aren't necessarily where the boundaries are for, for, for you yeah. uh, and for, for you out there listening, don't just be looking at the activities, look in other places. Like the activity could be anything. And if I came to you with it and I said, this is what I want to do. And I've thought about this and I know it's not great for this kind of thing. It's outside of, but I've prepared for it in these ways. You'd be like, okay. But if I just come to say, and I want to do this, Right. Well, have you thought about it? No, that's a problem right. so for you. So we come back to, your that, boundaries. to that. Do we want to spend time outside? And the answer was from both of us, actually. Yes, we would. But the, the thoughtlessness of we'll just we'll just trust that it'll all work out. No, we'll just walk outside naked. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, no yeah, planning. It, 
that made me feel it brought up all these feelings of 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 insecurity and and a lack of safety even it brings me right to that edge of safety but also i just don't feel invested in you're totally right i the best gift i get any holiday season is whatever people have thought out and planned i love a well planned and well executed event and that means it could be short. It could be, the whole thing could be very tight. Um, I, but I don't want it to just be the whatever. I don't want to be yep. um, uncertain. My holidays growing up were very um, uh, the inconsistent. You didn't know what you were going to get day to day. And that makes me far more nervous and brings out the worst in me oh, versus choosing something large or small that's well, well planned, right. or at least that I know someone else is taking responsibility for the and, outcome. Yep. And the, and the, the gift that you can give me around that is setting that boundary. This yeah. is this, on this side of the boundary are all the things that I appreciate about gifts and holidays. And on this other side of the boundary are all the things that I that I don't just not appreciate, but that actively degrade the experience for me. When I know that, well, I know you better and I can help work with you to make the whole experience as good as it can be for us all. Yeah. I think this year in particular, it's going to be best if we can both um, be flexible and mm. firm in our boundaries. And we didn't talk about that much. And I, I had thought that we would, but, um, yeah, a flexibility to allow for the fact that this year isn't going to be like past years, yeah. but also a firmness in like letting ourselves stick up for ourselves, <laughs> letting our, yeah. letting letting it be okay to say this is what I need right now, and these are the creative ways I can think of to to meet that need. Uh, I don't think it's going to be the easiest season we've ever had, um, but I do think that there are more opportunities this year than ever to recreate and invent yes. because There's disruption. the pull of so, tradition. Yeah. The disruption yeah. can, can interrupt in that, that gravity of tradition in that disruption. We can reimagine what we're going to do. Right. So, so yeah, I would invite everybody to uh, reimagine what your holidays look like, what your relationship in the holidays looks like. And I would love to hear from anybody who's reimagining. I'd be ah, super excited be to hear really from that. And you can always find me and contact me through um, joliehamilton.com. So yeah, I would totally like to hear about that. Okay. Well, this was great. It was. Thanks, Ken. I appreciate it. And thank you, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Project Relationship Podcast with Dr. Jolie Hamilton and Ken Hamilton. In episode three, Ken and I talked about how hard it can be to set boundaries and how the holidays, with all its emphasis on tradition, can make it even more complicated. Combining our households a decade ago made for some real misadventures <laughs> that should have been holiday fun. It's taken us a long time to figure out how to know what we want and then communicate our yeses and nos. And we noticed how that's a practice that we can't afford to get complacent about, especially in 2020. We invited you all to use the disruption of 2020 as an opportunity to reimagine some of your holiday needs and wants. Join us next time when we dive into one of the biggest questions in any committed relationship. Who the heck is this person that I am living with? No, really, who are they? We're going to consider what it means to know someone and how we figured out us, you and I, what it takes to make each of us feel seen and loved. And until then, remember, relationships can be messy, and that's good news. 